Okay, so just a little warning. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, Hillsborough. So if anybody is affected by that, um, either just turn off now or you might want to uh, just listen because I'll be putting some pictures up. Nothing graphic, but I can see how it might be upsetting, which is actually what we want to talk about. Um, first, a bit of background, because it might be not every one of our viewers um, is familiar with Hillsborough. To very much oversimplify, a long time ago now, there was a football match at a ground called Hillsborough. Uh, there was a crushing incident, to put it neutrally, and 96 people lost their lives in the immediate aftermath and one person died later. Um, horrible things were said about the victims. Um, they were blamed and things were said about them that were you know, would have been defamatory against living people. It took a long time for the... Uh, families to find justice on that and you know it'd be proved it wasn't actually the fans fault and it was uh, actually a mistake on behalf of the police's um, point but it's been a long fight for justice and people are obviously still very upset about that I mean I don't know if any of you have ever been to Liverpool uh, it's an amazing place actually I used to love going there when my friends did teacher training and the thing with Liverpoolians is a lot of the cliches they're all true it's a really really friendly town where people look out for each other so you can imagine how this still affects the community today. So, what happened? Well, there was a football match and some guy was wearing a shirt um, that basically said uh, 97, um, still not enough. And that has been taken to be a reference to Hillsborough. There's been talk about it's something to do with how many points you need to qualify. Uh, that might be a matter for well, you know, elsewhere. Um, I'm not going to talk about that case in too many details, but people have asked... Um, if somebody does this, you know, does it amount to a crime? Well, actually, yes, it does. Um, probably, if there is to be a, anything, it'll be charged under either Section 4 or Section 5 of the Public Order Act. Uh, they basically describe the same behaviour, uh, but the intent is slightly different. So what actually is, uh, you know, what do you have to do? Uh, basically, it's displaying something this is one of the elements of the offense it's displaying something you know it can be a sign or writing uh, and shirts sure certainly count that can cause somebody alarm harassment or, di or distress and it has to be abusive um the old test was it included things that were merely insulting uh, that has now been removed um so the test is abusive um, there's all this talk about, you know, whether that covers offensive. Uh, CPS guidance says that actually a lot of things that are offensive can amount to abuse. But you also take into account, um, you know, the, the, the likely audience, the likelihood of offending somebody. So, you know, words in one area, in one place, might not amount to a crime, whereas they would in another place. Um, you know, it, it, there's a lot of context here. It's also a defence to say that your actions were reasonable. Um, or that you didn't expect anybody could actually see that. It's not a defence to say that uh, you didn't realise anybody would be offended. Um, with Section 4, you have to intend that somebody's offended. Uh, you effectively have to be targeting somebody. But with Section 5, it's more general. Um, you know, it, it, And it's an objective test. It's like, would a reasonable person think, actually, yes, you can see why the people who saw that in these particular circumstances were offended. Um, we've actually had a case on this. Uh, this was heard in the magistrate's court and somebody wearing a similar shirt, uh, they pleaded guilty to Section 5. So because that was a guilty plea, the law wasn't really tested. I mean, theoretically, it, you know, this could go to appeal and the law, you know, the, the appeal court might put the threshold somewhere else. Uh, it's always difficult, though, because th the law recognises that these things are all very context-specific, and appeal courts tend not to interfere with the uh, decisions of first-instance courts. You know, they go, well, you heard everything, you're familiar with the facts, you know the local area, uh, you're in the best place to judge. But especially when it's a guilty plea, uh, it's just not tested. Uh, so the guy, he was fined, because uh, the penalty, the maximum penalty for Section 5 is a fine at what we call Level 3. Um, those levels move to adjust for sort of inflation and things. Uh, but it was fined £600 plus victim surcharge plus costs. So that's something, like I say, I'm not commenting about any particular case um, or implying that anybody may have committed any sorts of offences at this stage. This is more just sort of uh, general guidance. Uh, but I hope people found that useful and it wasn't too distressing.